the Lord will so feed us with manna from above that we'll be able to share with other people. That people, you, you, you have confidence to say others to join you. And when you say you invite other people to join you, what will happen is that they will, you will not know that you are already passing out the lifeline to them. You are, you are, you are sharing blessing with them. See, if you, if you are going to invite somebody into, you, you, you are saying, come, come, and, come and be blessed. And they look at you, they say, are you yourself blessed? And you say, no, I'm, I'm very sorrowful now. They, then they will ask you, are you inviting me to your sorrow? You invite me to come and share your sorrow. That is not going to make people to follow you. You want to pray that God bless us enough to share with other people. Lord, rain down your blessing in an abundance, in an abundance such that we, 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 we cannot use alone. That was, it's so, so abundant that we'll be able to share with people, be able to share with our friends, our colleagues, that when we say come with us, right in the come with us, they are, they are getting blessed. Right with right in the in the invitation, they are getting blessed. They say, ah, the, the way you are talking looks like as if uh, something great is happening. There. Yes, something greater is even happening. You want to pray that God bless us so much that Lord, we, 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 we our life will be able to share. We will be able to share with others as we invite others to this place that they will be they will be receiving the blessing and they will be receiving confidence that yes, this is the place to go. This is the place to be in the name of Jesus Christ, Father. We are. Not not sufficient of ourselves we need you we need abundance of your grace abundance of your power abundance of your blessing lord not just for us alone lord give us so much that we can't use alone give us so much that we can't exhaust give us so much that oh god that that that, that is more than what we ever need give us so much oh god more than every we can ever carry therefore oh god lord bless our so abundantly that when we go out to share with people to invite others to others to this place that they will be mightily blessed that right in our invitation, they will be they will be receiving from you, they will be hearing from you, they will be they will be having confidence, they will be having boldness, they will be having tasks, they will be having hunger to come along with us in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, without doing make believe, Lord, they will just believe that yes, this is the right thing, this is the right place in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, do it, oh God. Lord, reveal, oh God, this place to as many, oh God, that we are inviting to come along. Reveal it to them in the name of Jesus Christ. You can do it you have done it before lord reveal to them in their dream reveal to them in their where they are where they are sleeping reveal to them where they are awake walking or where they are awake lord reveal to many before even before we meet them we go pre- prepare their heart lord confirm our words as we speak to them in the name of jesus Christ. thank you father in jesus name we pray Amen. in jesus name we pray Amen. we want to pray that the lord will take control of the singing in this place today that our singing will mix the, with the singing of the angels that there will be nothing unclean nothing distracting nothing that will make god unhappy in our singing that every singing that we do here today that the song will, will bring blessing that the song will take us to the presence of god that the song we we we, we join our choir we join our join our church with the choir in heaven that our singing will be joined with those those of the angels or above in the mighty name of jesus father we need you we need your presence we need your inspiration we need your spirit to enhance our singing that everything we sing here lord we we, 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 we join us with the choir in heaven that you will join us with the, with the voice of the angels worshiping God honoring God glorifying God day and night Lord 24 7 Lord will pray that our singing here will not be in the flesh Lord will pray that our singing here will be holy will be righteous will be acceptable will be glorifying will be honoring your name that everything we sing here today Lord will bring the power of the angels down to mix with us to, to, to fellowship with us and I will mix our soul our, our song to rise to the presence of God as a sweet song smelling savor in the, in the sight of God today in Jesus name in Jesus name we pray Amen. want to pray for the Sunday scripture uh, the, 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 the uh, uh, precept upon precept as we have today that the Lord God of heaven himself will reveal himself in, this, in the teaching that everyone will be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ that this precept upon precept will make meanings we lift up, up we educate we inspire we increase our faith we draw us close to God and we 
Give us ability to obey God, to do the will of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray that Lord, this day, the, our singing today, I mean, our our sad scripture, our, our uh, prisoner will will we'll, we'll bring blessing, we we'll bring knowledge, we we'll bring enlightenment, we we'll quicken us, we we'll, we we'll, we we'll strengthen us, we we'll give us manner from above in the name of Jesus. Let us pray, Father. We we'll pray this day that oh Lord, all that we shall do here this day will bring glory to Your holy name. That the precept upon precept, Lord, will will, will be a blessing to everyone that comes here today that the prisoner of a prison lord we nourish we educate we enlighten we empower lord we 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 we, we elevate men to the presence of god in jesus name in jesus name we pray Amen. we want to pray that even in the in the prayer that we are going to raise here today that the prayer will bring will bring blessing upon his people in the name of jesus Christ. that men and women will be blessed everyone will be blessed in the mighty name of jesus that god of heaven will re- reach down in the name of jesus that he will answer by fire he will answer in his power he will answer in his majesty in the name of jesus Father, we just pray that you come and take absolute control of even the time of prayer, of, of praying and announcement. Lord, that everything will be ordered by your spirit. That everything will bring glory to your name. That every prayer request raised here, oh God, will, will be wonderfully answered by fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. We want to pray that every form of distraction we resist them, we rebook them, we, we take authority over all power of darkness, over agent of darkness. They will not function, they will not prosper in this place in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we pray that Lord, your presence will be here, your glory will, will be here, that there will be no place for the enemy, there will be no place for buying and selling spirit, there will be no place for distracting spirit, there will be no place for disturbing spirit, there, is, there will be no place for a glitch or hitch in this place in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. We want to pray that the Lord will, during the message, that the Lord will so bless us, the Lord will so touch us, the Lord will so quicken us, that the Lord will so enlighten us, that we will catch the fire of the will of God for ourselves in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we want to pray that, Lord, the word of God you have given us today, Lord, let it quicken us, let it strengthen us, let it empower us, let it bring us, O oh Lord, into your will to begin to fulfill your calling upon our life in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. All that we have said in prayer, we believe you have, you have heard us. We believe you are doing it. Lord, we believe you are fulfilling it because you said, whatsoever you desire when you pray, believe you receive. Lord, we believe we have received. We believe you have done it because you are ever faithful God. Glory to your holy name. In Jesus' name. As we start this worship this worship service today, Lord, bless your people. Lord, manifest all more than what we have asked in prayer in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. All the time. All the time. The Lord is good. Especially to me and my family. I don't know about you. Especially to me and my (laughs) family. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's stand up and be in the attitude of worship. Let's give God the glory. Let's give him honor for bringing us into a new month. For counting us among the living. For our going out and our coming in. That he has been the one that has been protecting us. He did not allow evil to befall any one of us. Let's begin to appreciate him for his protection, for his provision. That he did not allow us to lack any good thing in life. Let's give him praise. Let's honor him. Let's thank him for loving us. I just want to say thank you, Jesus. Let's thank him because he's with us. That's the reason why we can wake up this morning yeah, and Jesus. say that we are coming to his presence to worship him. Lord, Let's Jesus. adore him. You, for in Jesus' mighty name we have worship. Amen. Amen. As I come into your presence, I'm so happy. As I come into your presence, I'm so glad. In your presence there is anointing, and your spirit move around me. In your presence, anointing breaks the yoke. As I come, as I come into your presence, I'm 
so happy as I come, as I come into your presence. I'm so glad, and your presence, there is anointing, and your spirits move around me, in your presence, anointing breaks the yoke. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for everything you have done. Thanks, thanks, Daddy. We give you thanks for. We give you praise. We honor you. Thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have worship. Amen. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Thank your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Most 
thy God. Jehovah Jireh. You are the most high. Jehovah Rapha. You are the most high. Change to change. You are the most high. The King of Kings. You are the most high God. You are the reason why we are dancing, Jehovah. You are the most high God. You are the reason why we are dancing, Jehovah. You are the most high God. Jehovah, you, you are, are the most you high are. You are the most high God, the most high. You, you are the most high God. You are the most high. You are the most high God. You are the most high. You are the most high God. Jehovah is the Lord. Jehovah is the Lord. For everlasting to everlasting. Jehovah is the Lord. Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah is the Lord. Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah is the Lord. From Genesis. To generation, Jehovah is the Lord. Jehovah is the Lord. Jehovah is the Lord. From everlasting to everlasting, Jehovah is the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, the love of my soul. Alpha Omega, you are worthy to be praised. In all generation, there is no one like you. Alpha Omega, you are worthy to be praised. Thank you, Jesus, you are the lover of my soul. Alpha Omega, you are worthy to be praised. In all generation, there is no one like you. Alpha Omega, you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. You oh are Lord. worthy to be praised. You oh are Lord. worthy to be praised. You oh are Lord. worthy to be praised, O oh Lord. In my life, you, you are worthy to be praised, O oh Lord. You are worthy to be praised, O oh Lord. You are worthy to be praised, O oh Lord. You are worthy to be praised, O oh Lord. You are worthy to be praised, O oh Lord. You are worthy to be in prayers eternal father the only one who is worthy to be praised and worshipped and adored we come this morning before you lord giving you our praise our thanks our appreciation for keeping us for sparing us lord this morning as we continue with precept upon precept we are asking lord for your presence to be with us we are asking for the leading of, of the holy spirit to give us guidance and understanding and to help our hearts, Lord, to take up to the wisdom which you, are, you want to give to us this morning. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Um, this morning, the, the topic for our precept upon precept is standing on God's promises. Standing on God's promises. 
And we are going to take our reading from the book of Second Peter. <laughs> Second Peter chapter one and verses one two to four. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle, uh, apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ and of Jesus our Lord. According as his divine power had given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue, thereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by this ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in our hearts in Jesus' name. As we have seen uh, and, and read this morning, it's about the promises of God unto us that believe. And today we are going to be admonished in this precept upon precept on standing on God's promises. Now, we say promise is a debt, isn't it? That's what we normally say. You give somebody your word that you are going to do something for them, and then you are standing on that word. But we are human. I can promise you that I will do this and this and that for you, but I may fail. Not because I just want to fail, deliberately fail, but circumstances may warrant that I will fail you. So therefore, who are we supposed to, to, to depend on? Whose words, whose promises are we supposed to, 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 to dwell on and to, to hold on to and to believe? Now, it is only God who can promise us and who has promised us and who never fails. But man will fail us. Our fathers may fail us, our mothers may fail us, our sons may fail, daughters may fail, uncles and friends may fail, but God will never fail. And um, a person's word, a promise is as good as the credibility of the person who making it. So that is why humanly we fault, you know, we default. But God, God's word, the Bible says, is what is yea and amen. When God speaks, he stands on his word. And that is why today, look at what God, let us take one of the examples of what God has said. When he destroyed the, the earth during those days of Noah, he promised again through the sign of the rainbow that this will be the sign that I will never do what? Destroy the earth again with, with rain. And it's a sign unto us till to, today. Sometimes when we see the rainbow, I say, oh, this reminds me of God's promise. What will have happened if this sign has not come with the rainbow? Some, maybe something disastrous will have happened. So we thank God. Many times men make promises but fail to fulfill them. Perhaps because of insincerity or inability to fulfill them. Somebody can, come, can make a deceitful promise to us and we are waiting. Oh, this person said they will do this. They never do it. Because they are not sincere or because they are a, unable to do, it, to do it. But God, with God it is not so. God is faithful to his promises. He is faithful to his promises. The scripture says, For all the promises of God in him are what? Yea, and in him, amen. Unto the glory of God by us. That is found in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 1, uh, verse 20. And that God, what? Is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that what? He should repent. Had he said, and shall he not do it? Or had he spoken, and shall he not make it good? That is God for us. So we can be assured that when God has given us a promise, we can rest on it. We can go to sleep because God will do it. Amen? Amen. Therefore, the strength of the believer is what? Is in the promises of God. That is why we are able to move about. That is why we are able to do what we are doing. Because we are banking and resting on the promises of God. Because we know his word are what? Yea and amen. They will never fail. 
So that is where the believer gets their strength from. So the, the strength of the believer, therefore, are what? The promises of God. They strengthen the believer to handle life's challenges. When we are faced with challenges in life, we can be rest assured that, oh, God has said this. There are a lot of circumstances that we may face in life. Is it bereavement? Is it loss of job? Is it, uh, is it uh, betrayal? Is it, you know, it could be anything. We have the promises in the word of God to keep us going, to keep us moving, to keep us trusting, and not to faint, and not to win, because God is with us. And he shields us from wicked devices of the enemy as well, through the promises of his word. Now, God's promises is for us through all circumstances. It's not just in a particular situation where you are, that's, oh, God only promised to keep me only in this situation. God's promises for us are what? It's for over every areas of our lives. Nothing is exempt. Whatever it may be, God's promises are there for you, abiding forever. The promises of God cover every areas, area of our lives. Sometimes we, we meet circumstances, we meet challenges, problems, difficulties, trials, which sometimes they perplex us. Sometimes they, they make us to, you know, kind of almost lose, lose faith. It, they are discouraging. But child of God, be rest assured that his promises are eternal for you, no matter what you may be passing through. Amen. Amen. Do not be discouraged. This morning, God is coming to us that his promises are what? They are standing and abiding forever. So whatever we are passing through, let your re mind rest on God's promises. Now, again, what do we do when we face problems and difficulties? Knowing that God has already promised us, given us his word of promise that, lo, I am with you to the end of the earth. He said, no matter what happens, the, 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 you know, he will be with you. He will strengthen you. He will deliver you. He will save you from whatever circumstances they, they, that may come your way. Now, some of us, when we seem to face problems, what do we do? We are shaking very quickly. Instead of us to go to the Lord in prayers, trusting him, you know, remembering, recalling his deeds of the past years in your lives. How many people have God failed here? I want to see your hand up. Has God failed you? Who has God failed? Nobody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So how many of us has God blessed and kept his promise in our lives that we can remember? I know I, can, I remember many, many times that God has saved me from death. When I was taken gravely ill and I thought, will this be the end? But God came to my rescue. How many times you were in financial crisis, we, think, we are thinking, how can I get the next meal? How will I be able to pay my transport for next week? Hallelujah. And the Lord comes and he made the supply. We do. Sometimes, let us sit down and think. You are getting your pay packet every month, your pay. If you sit down and think how much you have even spent in the month, sometimes it, it surpasses how much we have earned. Have we ever wondered how? God is a faithful God. Amen. So when trouble is in our place of work, like in our place of work, we face a maybe threat of loss of job or anywhere, let us you know, go to the Lord in prayers. Let us go back to those promises. Let us remind, Lord, you have said this concerning me. Concerning this situation, this is your word. I have your word. I have your backing. So we are not afraid because God will const constantly, you know, give us that uh, strength from the promises he's given to us. Now, the, uh, Christ himself, when God has also given us a task to do, he has said to us, go into the world and do what? And preach the gospel to every creature. This is one example that we will let us, you know, uh, uh, go through this together. He said, go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. When Christ sent us, his promises are for us. He knows that we are going to face some challenges there. We are going to face opposition there. But he has given us his word and promise. He said in the book of uh, Psalm chapter 2 verse 8, Ask of me and I shall give thee the heaven for thine inheritance and the utmost parts of the earth for thy possession. 
So when God has given us the task to, to, task to do, even as a father, is a task for you. Is a task for you. Motherhood is a task, isn't it? Being a worker in the church is a task. Going out there as an evangelist is a task. Whatever it is, a task that God has given to us. No matter what challenges may come with them, let us always learn to go back to the Word of God. Our courage seems to fail when we see the magnitude of a, a task. You know, sometimes we feel, oh, this, this, too much. How can I do this? Yes, you can do it. For with God, all things shall be what? Possible. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, and then sometimes we realize that, de look, delay is not denial. Because we've been asking God for something and it's not forthcoming yet. It's one year, it's two years, and your heart begins to sink. Your heart begins to get discouraged. You say, ah, I've been asking for this. How long will I dwell on this mountain? Hmm? Keep trusting. Keep praying. Keep moving. Keep persevering. Do not lose hope. Delay is not denial. For the fact that God has delayed in answering a, 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 a request we've made in prayers does not mean that he has failed us or he's not keeping to his promise. You see, sometimes we, we, we make mix mistakes because we are very impatient. God who has promised to say, even though it tarries, it shall surely do what? It shall surely come to pass. So, sometimes, because we're in a hurry, we can't wait for that, we can't tarry no longer. What do we do? We want to adopt human methods to solve those problems. We are only what compounding the problem the more. Hallelujah. We often sometimes assume that God has forgotten about us during the time of trouble. It's so easily done, believers. We are easily shaken and discouraged with, oh, God has abandoned me now. Why is it only me facing this uh, problem? Oh, that my sister, everything seems to go well with her. That brother, he doesn't seem to have a problem. No, child of God, wait where God is asking you to wait. He is coming. He is coming. Though the night may be long, the, the morning will surely what? The morning will surely break. Even the darkness of the night, no matter how thick it is, the sun will shine again. The sun will shine again in the morning. Hallelujah. So, I think I'm going to draw a closure here. Let us always know the promises of God are what ye and amen. God is ever present. Hallelujah. Amen. He has not abandoned you. He has not abandoned me. We are not forsaken. We are not orphans. We are not without a father. Who cares for us? Hallelujah. So when uh, difficulties come and we face challenges, let us always do the right thing. Let us be reminded of his eternal promise. No matter how hard that situation, no matter how the, the pain you are going through, you are not alone. But also, the sinner's prayers God will not hear until they come to repentance. If anyone is dwelling in sin, and he's crying to God, Lord, this, and you want to live a life of sin. God is calling you this morning that you should come back home, repent of your sin, give your life to him. Give your life to him. Be saved today. Sinners and back, backsliders must therefore acknowledge and confess their sins to God. Repent and accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior and begin to live a life, a, a newness of life in Christ. And then they will also be what? They will partake of this promise of God in their lives too. We are going to go to some questions now briefly. And the first question is this. What is the reason for our confidence in the promises of God? What is the reason? Why are we so confident in the promises of God as believers? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has done it before. He will do it again. He is never leaving us alone. We are not alone. Hallelujah. Number two, mention some situations in our lives that are covered by the promises of God. We've said it. Every area of our lives are what? Covered. So let us mention some of those areas so that we are practical about it. 
Amen, yes, protection. Provision, yes. And our healing, yes. God has promised us healing, yes. And answering of our prayers, yes. Delay is not denied. When we pray, he will answer us. Yes, any more? Praise the Lord. We thank God for these contributions. We are living this, um, uh, going with the mind and knowing that God is interested in every aspect of our lives. His promises cover every area of our lives, no matter how minute or how big they are. Be rest assured, child of God, you are not alone. You have God's promises. Amen. Shall we go before the Lord in prayers? Thank the Lord for the word that you have heard. Have you been discouraged before you came here this morning? Listeners, have you been discouraged? Are you going through some trials, some, some difficult uh, circumstances? God's promises are yea and amen. He's not a man that he should fail, nor the son of man that he should repent of those things he has said concerning you and concerning me. Thank you, Father Lord. You have reassured us again this morning that your word is yea and amen. That which you have said concerning us, you bring to pass. And Lord, you are making us to know this morning that delay is not denial. For the fact that we have been waiting for an answered prayer, prayer does not mean you have abandoned us or we are forsaken. Lord, we thank you this morning for this assurance. Blessed assurance indeed, O oh Lord. Thank you, Father Lord, even as we are encouraged, as we are admonished, as we continue with the service, Lord, Holy Spirit, go with us. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us this morning. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Holy name. Hallelujah. Oh, my soul, and all that is within me. And all that is within me. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, oh, my soul. And all that is within me, and all that is within me, praise His holy name. Hallelujah. And all that is within me, and all that is within me, praise His holy name. Amen. It is time to praise the Lord. It is time to bless his holy name. Let every living thing praise the Lord. I want you to open your mouth and say thank you, Jesus, for preservation of lives, for his provision, for the way I've been supplying all our needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I want you to open your mouth and say thank you, Jesus, for all that you have done, for all the love, for all your care, for all your protection, for the way you have been supplying all our needs according to your riches in glory. Father, I thank you. Father, I worship you. I lift you up above all others. For there is no one like you. I thank you very much for everything that you have done for us. Thank God for the peace in this nation. Father, I thank you because we have peace in this nation. We can still gather together at your feet as believers. So, Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. We are going to pray. And tell the Lord, oh God, we want you to stretch forth your healing hand upon as many that are in difficulty. They are not in good health. Even believers that are sick, that the Lord will heal them. Those that are unbelievers, the Lord will show forth his power upon them. They will be healed in the name of Jesus. Those that are being affected by this pandemic, that the Lord will set them free in the name of Jesus. I want you to open your mouth and pray. Let every soul pray. And I thank you. 
for everything. I pray that you stretch forth your healing hand, your healing hand upon those that are ill. Lord, I pray that you set them free. Oh Lord, show your mighty power. Show them that you are the great healer. Oh Lord, you are the only one that can set them free. Lord, I pray that you set them free. Oh Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. We are going to ask God because he is the God of peace. For those nations that are not having peace, that God will visit them and there will be peace in Jesus' name. I want you to pray for nations that are not having peace, families that are not having peace, place of works that are not having peace, Oh, individual that are not having peace, husband and wife that are not having peace, that the God of peace will visit them in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we pray that the peace of God will visit families, will visit nations, will visit countries, will visit place of work, or oh, will visit individual that has no peace. Let the peace of the Lord that passes all understanding descend upon the nations, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Descend upon families, in Jesus' name. Descend upon husband and wife, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. We are going to pray for our church here, through Gospel Bible Church, that God should continue to add unto us daily. Oh, that God should expand our coast. We are going to pray that God will descend upon us, give us pillars in this church. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus for true gospel Bible church that you continue to add unto us, that you add unto us daily. Oh, Lord. I pray that you expand our coast, oh Lord. I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you give us pillars, oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Add unto us on daily basis in Jesus' name. And as men that have got our handbills, Lord, that have got the tracts with the, 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 the number, oh Lord, I pray that they will be able to come to church and be blessed, oh Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We are going to pray that today's service, we are going to be blessed. Amen. And at the same time, what is it that is troubling your hearts? I want you to tell the Lord. He answer prayers. He answer prayers. What are the things that in your mind that you are unable to tell anybody? What is it that is in your mind that you are able to discuss with, with even your husband or your pastor or your friend? That is in your heart, you are, you, are, you, are, you are telling God. Tell God this moment, God will answer you. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will answer. Tell the Lord, is this salvation of your children? Is this salvation of your sister? Is this salvation of your brother? Is this salvation of your husband? Is this salvation of your wife? Is this salvation of your boss in place of work? Oh, tell the Lord, he will answer. I pray, Lord, that you answer all our prayers. Oh, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you add unto us in this church in the name of Jesus. Pray for the salvation of as many that are in touch with me, in contact with me, that are not born again. Lord, I pray that they will be saved in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you very much for this moment. We bless you because you are our God. We thank you because you are the only one that we rely upon. We thank you because we are here today again. We bless your holy name to so land at your feet. Father, accept our thanks and praises in Jesus' name. Amen. Son of Ophages, we pray that as the word of God will be going on, the special song, we pray that you bless us with those words of your own in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I pray for individual here that you meet us at the point of all our needs in Jesus' name. Amen. Pray that you supply all our needs according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you because there is peace. Thank you because there is settlement of things. Thank you because uh, as men that are ill, they are set free in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you because you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. 
this is true gospel bible church i we always meet on sunday 10 o'clock and then um, on uh, wednesday we meet online we are happy to 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 receive you in our midst god will bless you in jesus name you be blessed as the word comes to you through this song in Jesus name <clears throat> I never said that I would give you silver or gold or that you will never feel the fire or shiver in the cold but I did say you'd never walk through this world alone and I did say don't make this world your home. I never said that fear wouldn't find you in the night. Or that loneliness was something you'd never have to fight. But I did say I'll be right there by your side. And I did say I'll always help you fight. You know I made a promise that I intend to keep. My grace will be sufficient in every time of need. My love will be the anchor that you can hold on to. This is the promise. This is the promise I made to you. I never said that friends will never turn their backs on you. Or that the world around you wouldn't see you as a fool. But I did say like me, you'll surely be despised. And I did say, you my ways confound the wise. I didn't say you'd never taste the bitter kiss of death or have to walk to chilly Jordan to enter into rest. But I did say I'll be waiting right on the other side. And I did say I'll dry every tear you cry. Cause you know I made a promise that I've prepared a place and someday sooner than you think you'll see me face to face and you'll sing with the angels and a countless multitude this is the promise this is the promise I've made to you. So just keep on walking. Don't turn to the left or right. And in the midst of darkness, let this be your light. That hell can't separate us. You're going to make it through. This is the promise. This is the promise I've made to you. This is the promise. This is the promise that I've made to you. Amen. We let's bow our heads for prayer. You want to talk to God this moment that, Lord, I am here, not because he does, he does not know, but I want to receive. I am here for my own bread of life. I am here for my portion. I am here for what will make me to fulfill your calling upon my life. Lord, it's time for you to give me my, my portion. Lord, speak to my heart, speak to my situation. Open my eyes. Remember, we are not yet in heaven. You are not in heaven. We are still here. And as long as we are here, we still need some grace. We still need some help from God. So that nothing hinders you and I from fulfilling what God has called you to be. You want to pray that God, this day, this moment, Lord, I may not understand it. I may not know that is what you mean, 
but lead me, O oh Lord, into a rock that is higher than me. Help me to be able to take on the challenge and help me to be able to be what you want me to be by the power of your word this day in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you very much for your presence here. We bless you for your mercy here. Lord, we thank you very much for your favor upon us. Lord, we thank you very much for your kindness towards us. Lord, we thank you very much for abundance of your grace upon our lives. Lord, we thank you very much for this gracious opportunity to hear your word. Blessed be your name, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we are ready. We are prepared. We are before you. Speak to every one of us. Amen. Lord, that which will make us to fulfill your calling upon our life, that which will make us to be what you want us to be, not what we want to be, that which will make us to fulfill your purpose and plan for sending us to this planet. Lord, deliver unto us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Give us access to your grace this day in Jesus' name. Amen. And let every word we hear this day mix with faith in our hearts. Where there is challenge, Lord, enable us to take on the challenge. Amen. Lord, make us your champion in this generation in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Brethren, this moment the Lord wants to speak to us. And if you remember last week we were here and we said that ye are the light of the world. Do you still remember? Yes. How many people are light of the world here? If you are not light, don't raise up your hand. Only those who are light. I'm watching you. <laughs> I'm watching you. <laughs> are there lights here? Yes, yes. Let me touch every light. If you are a light, raise up your hand. If you are not light, don't raise up your hand. Aha, praise God. <laughs> we are not too many for me now to be able to see every one of us. Praise the, praise the name of the Lord. So we said we are light of the world. And when you look at the nature of light, what does it do? It enlightens the eyes, enables the eyes to see. And when you bring a light into a place where there have been darkness, it's not only you that brought the light to see, others will see the light. Are you with me? Friends will see, relatives will see, family will see, even enemies will see. Amen? Amen. Enemies will see. Amen? When they see it, they might be envious. And they might, be, they might not be able to un understand. And that's why you remember that we look at the menace, the danger of darkness. The danger, the menace of not having the light. We look at the menace, we look at the making of the light. And then we look at uh, the situation whereby you and I need to shine. And how do we begin to lighten the world? We ourselves need to have the light in us. And Jesus is the is the one is the light is the one that brings life into us. And it is the life of Jesus that becomes light in our soul. And we have been appointed. We didn't appoint ourselves. Jesus appointed us to be what to be light of the world. If you remember, so we are we are we are light on purpose. Purpose on purpose by which is uh, purpose is appointed. I mean uh, established by Christ. So, as Jesus has put us in place to be a light of the world, we have no other means, or other things to do than to pick up the responsibility and be light. And when you put a light on that bushel, what happens? It will not give light to the people in the, in the, in the house or in, this, in that environment. We need to put light in the place whereby it is accessible and it is a blessing to people. I pray that. The Lord will help you and I that our light will never go to recession. Amen. Our light will never go to a coma. Our life, our life will never turn to darkness in Jesus' name. Amen. Today we want to step further. I want to look at the word of God that looks like what we learned last week, but not exactly. But it has to do with something similar. Praise the Lord. We're going to turn our Bible now to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 5. Uh, I want to read from verse 13. 
Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. And if I read further, you see where we got the message last week. Say, ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on an hill cannot be what? Cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. But it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Then he now said, let your light so shine. Not that, not just shining in a little way. Let it so shine. Let it so shine that it dazzles all darkness. It tossed stop the mouth of gainsayer. Let your light so shine before men that it may that, that, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. If our light is not shining enough for people to glorify God. We have not we have not arrived we have not reached the place until our light becomes so shiny that there is no altar of darkness there's no place for darkness that people who are even envious or who, are, who hate us begin to testify that that is when we are fulfilling our calling i pray god will take you will take every one of us there in jesus name Amen. now today we want to step up it's like we are backing up but then that is the message we have today remember the first message we had when we came here was God of the, of the beginning. And we said God made light as the first. And that's why we went to that. You say, but pastor, why is it that you went to uh, verse 14 and then you, you, you're now coming back? Yes, we do, we do that sometimes. It's not always the way things are put that the Lord will lead, lead us to, to talk about it or to share it sometimes. It, we are still in order. Then you can see that God also created light first. You didn't hear that God created salt first. But God first created light. Can you see? Can you see that the pastor is still in order? Amen? Amen. And that the Spirit of God is still working with us? Now, God created light. And that's why we have learned about light. Now we are we're coming to salt. And then you, you, you now remember, you begin to wonder, Pastor, but after God created light, what did he create next? I tell you what, God created firmament. Amen? Amen. God created farmament. What was the job of the farmament? The farmament was what preserved life here. Many of us do not know that. Farmament is like the salt that we are talking about today. He first of all made light. When God made light, there was no sky. Farmament is called sky. All the sky you see here, they are like 100 miles into, into space. Very, very far. 100 miles. When you do, when, when, when you get to something like maybe 25 miles, then they say you are in a lower orbit. When you are getting to 62 miles and above, they, they are saying that you are now in a higher orbit. Some of the satellites that you see, some of those things that you see in the night that looks like stars, that looks down. There are things that men took up there. Are you with me? But there are things that are higher up there. There are other things that are higher up there. Are you with me? That man-made things that have been put there. But apart from there, those stars you see that are far away, they are mighty and big, but because of their distance, that's why they are small like that. Why am I explaining this to us? God made firmament. But many people don't understand what was the use of it. From the firmament, from the sky, we get rain. From the sky, anything, any rock that is coming from space. The reason why we have been here, and you, you have never heard that some things drop and burnt down the whole city like, like we are, is because of the sky. It, when the world was first made, there was no sky. And there was no rain until the time of Noah. Are you with me? But, but then God now saw that this earth is not very secure. 
he now created the farmer man. he put the farmer he put the sky there and then we now begin to have rain we begin to all those kind of things begin to happen and this farmer man, this sky also prevent space rock from coming down and knock us once they penetrate our sky what happens to them is that they, they, they catch fire any evil that anyone wants to send to your life will catch fire in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, God make some creatures, some things, He created some, some things that are meant for protection, preservation. If there was no sky, I tell you, the, 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 the power of the sun will have melted us, burnt us down. Are you with me? The radiation from sun will have destroyed the planet. But God created the sun first, and then he saw the power. He said, mm -mm, these people need farmament. They need something to preserve. They need something to protect. They need something to shield. They need something to protect. And that is why that is there. That's why we are now looking at something that preserves, something that protects, something that, that protects, something that, that, that gives permanence. The earth is like this because of the sky. All other planets, even including moon, that has no that has no sky, they are not as protected as we are. Amen. Many of, many of us don't know about science, but that is a little science that we can learn today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But we have not come for for science. Are you with me? Please let's calm down. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We have not come for science today, but we're trying to make illustration so that we can understand the word of God. Because when Jesus would talk to Nicodemus, he said, if I speak unto you about earthly things, and you, things that could happen here, and you don't understand, how are you going to understand when I begin to speak about heavenly things? That is the reason why we talk like this. Praise the Lord. Today, the Lord is talking to us about a topic that is called, ye are the salt of the earth. Everybody say, I am the salt of the earth. I have given all those preambles for this message to make meaning to us. We are what? You are, I, I am the salt of the earth. Now, when you look at ordinary salt, the one we use for cooking, that is the commonest that we know. Yet there are many, many, many salts. When you look at salt, salt looks very viable, I mean very, very important, very, very essential in human life. If you buy a lot of ingredients, you buy a lot of food stuff, you buy a lot of uh, condiment, and you want to make a good cookery, you want to make a big, a lot of cooking, if you miss out salt. Even if you spend 12 hours cooking, if you miss out salt, ah, people are going to hiss. People are going to complain. People are going to, people are going to be sad. That, ah, how I prepared, I, my appetite has been warmed up. Now, look at what has happened now. Ah, ah. Oh, I didn't enjoy this thing. Look at how much I've paid for this thing. Look at how the, uh, I've invited my friend. But oh, the food just lack salt. Just a little bit of salt. Just a little bit of Once that is missing in the food, the cookery, the cooking is spoiled. Can you imagine how essential it is? At the same time, if the salt goes ajar, goes too much, they say, oh no. This one will kill, you, kill us. If we, this, this, the salt is just too much. You see, salt moderately added to food is so essential. It makes people's day. It, it opposes people's joy. But if it is not there, ah, it damages people's joy. It destroys the occasion. It destroys the cookery. Your life will not be destroyed. Amen. Your joy will not be destroyed. Amen. God is now telling you and I that you are the salt of the earth. Think about the importance of salt. Salt has many more use than the cooking that we know. There are a lot of things that God appointed salt to do. If I read that place that we have just read to you again, you will see. Say, ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? If salt breaks down, expires, if salt is destroyed and it cannot make anything we add it to to be sweet salt is useless in Israel in those days when salt goes bad guess what they do with it they put it on the soil they put it on the ground on their highway you know today if we have ice what do we put on the, on the ground salt in Israel in the, in the ancient times they, they, they don't throw away bad salt anyway but that salt we no longer sweeten things for the mouth. 
will no longer be added to sacrifice, that sword will be thrown into the highway, it will be thrown into the doorway, it will be thrown into the ground, and people will mash it, mash it, mash it, mash it. That is a useless sword. You will not become a useless sword. Your, your usefulness will not become uselessness in Jesus' name. You will not expire. Salt has some characteristics that make it very important. Almost in every human life. There are so, there are so many. If I ask any one of us to tell us some, you will, you, you will know one thing or the other. There are so many ways in which you use salt. That some, some of them you might not know because you are not used to it. Salt is so vastly important and so vastly useful that Jesus, apart from saying you are the light of the world, he has no other thing to say than to say that you have to be the salt of the earth. Because salt is it's like a central ingredient. Salt is like an ingredient that is without it in this planet, in, in, in cookery, in families, the, the, the world will be bitter, the world will be sour, the world will be damaged. And joy will be destroyed. I pray our joy will not be destroyed in Jesus' name. Amen. Say, ye are the ye are the salt of the earth. You are not just salt of cookery. Not just salt of, of, of food. Salt of the earth. That is more global responsibility. You are not just salt in the kitchen. You are salt of the earth. What does it mean that when when, when Jesus Christ says you are the salt of the earth? It means you have responsibility. If you are a real salt that is not expired, you, are, you have responsibility of preservation. We know salt preserve. You, you have responsibility of permanence. The reason why we add salt to food that we have not cooked, you know we put salt in food that we have not cooked? To make them permanent in their taste. To preserve them. So salt adds its savor. It adds its sweetness. Even though in, 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 in understanding it inside, it's not actually savor, but then it, what, it, what salt does to the food you cook with it is that it breaks down the, 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 the food and then the sweetness of that food comes out. And then we taste, when we taste it, we say, yeah, it's well salted. Yes. <laughs> Amen. The salt has to be adequate. Amen. But what am I saying? Salt has sweetness that it adds to food. Salt has protective power. From bacteria that will grow on your pepper, that will grow on your whatever. Not only that, salt has preservative power. Are you with me? And many of us do, may not know, salt also has sweetening power. If some people add salt to coffee, because they don't want that coffee to taste so bitter. If you don't want your coffee to taste so bitter, they add a little bit of salt to it. But it, when you add it to it, it will neutralize the taste of the coffee. Many of us may not know that. I can see people raising up their head now. Yes, we don't know everything. Me too, I don't know until I started preparing for this message. Amen? People add a little bit of, of, of salt to the coffee so as to kill the, the bitterness of the coffee. Instead of people using sugar, they use coffee. A, a, a little bit of salt. And so salt has sweetness. Salt has savor. Salt has preservative, salt, preservative power. Not only that, it also does the work of uh, protection. And then permanence. It adds permanence to that product. It makes the, the lifespan of the lifespan of that product, whatever it is that could go spoil quickly, it makes it to last long. And when you look at all these things that I've just enumerated, Jesus now says, You are the salt of the earth. Can you, is, is it making sense now? That if you understand what salt can do in, in your cooking, in your household, in your, in your, in your, in your, in your life, in your drink, Salt, you are the salt of the life of men. There are many people who are living their life in bitterness. There are many people who are sorrowing. There are many people who just wake up, they, they say, they, I, don't, I just don't know why I'm sad today. Nothing has happened. They just wake up with sadness. They just become moody. Everything just changed. And then they are, just, they are just sorrowful and they don't know. When you meet such people, you have to lift their spirit up. Your salt must take away, neutralize the bitterness that the enemy has arrested them with. Our life is meant to do what? To add sweetness, to neutralize bitterness and add sweetness to their life. When you meet a, 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 a people who are young people and there is, a, you look at their life and then their life is a description we say is juvenile delinquency. You see juvenile delinquency, you see disobedience and rebellion of the teenager, of the adolescent, you see all those kind of behavior that is against the word of God. You see some 
radical behavior and bad behavior in their life. When you meet such people, by the time you finish with them, they are, your, your thought must have done what? Add some calmness to them. Add, take away some degradation that is going on in their life and bring them up from the, 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 the root to destruction and bring them back into sweetness. Their life that has become a, 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 a dangerous or evil or bitter in the life of other people, then you revamp their life by your own sweetness, by your own salt, and then you bring them to the grace of God. This is what responsibility Jesus is giving to you and I. Are you able to do it? Are you able to do it? But that is not all. There are people that say, ah, I'm, I'm, I'm about to commit suicide. In fact, there are some people that have been caught on the verge of committing suicide. And then they are just lucky that somebody just came in at, at the right time. Say, what are you doing? You can't do that. No. It's not, it's not that. It's not that uh, the, the world is not collapsing on you. You are not the only one feeling this. Look, somebody had it like that, and this is how God helped you. Somebody had worse situation than you. This is how God helped them. This, and then you give them the testimony of what God has done in your life and what God has done in other people's life. What do you do? What, what, what would that person do? Say, ah, except you are here. Look, look at the loop has been made. Look at the situation. I would have just, I, I, I would have just taken, taken my life. And then you save that person. What have you done? You have preserved that person. Jesus is telling you that you are a salt to go and preserve. There are people that are sorrowful to death. There are people that are close to the grave. There are people that are about to take untimely death. They are about to die, about to give up the ghost. When you come close and you are, are there at the right time, Jesus is, is sending you and I in this generation. No matter how difficult it looks like to you, Jesus is sending you to such life. Those people who, who, who sees no value in their life anymore, who sees no joy in being in this world, Jesus is sending you to what? To, to preserve them, to snatch them from the, from the mouth of death, to bring them back to life. And you can see that it's a heavy responsibility. When Jesus says you are the light of the world, it's not just something we read and forget. You are the light of the world. But if I am sending you forth, and you that I'm sending for, your salt is already expired. Salt can expire. Maybe we don't know. If salt expires, what, what, what do we notice? The salt we use in the house, they will begin to melt, 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 melt. But it does expire more than that. When it cannot switch in anymore, and it's becoming more acidic, you taste it, it's, it's biting your tongue. It's, it's, not, it's, not, it's no longer sweetening, but it's becoming acidic. Something else has happened. Such salt are not good for cooking. So what do you do? You throw them down. God, Jesus is now saying that you are the light of the world, but if your saltness, if your, if your savor is lost, if my savor is lost, where are we shall, shall it be salted? What, of what use will it be to the church? To the family, to the city, to this generation. Of what use? What will? Where will God get something to bring the the, the destruction, the 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 the, 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 the composition that is going on? Expiring that? You no, know, it's not only so that expire. All other things around also expire. What will God use to preserve those things that are degrading, that are destroying, that are decomposing around? So you can see how much God is going to be, is, God is depending on you and I. Before he now opens his mouth and say, you are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. You are not just salt of your family, but you are a global salt. Everybody say, I'm a global salt. Yes. And you are a city salt as, as well. Amen. Amen. So we have a responsibility from the Lord. But what, how can we preserve our souls from getting destroyed? How? We're going to look at a few verses. How, 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 how are we be able to preserve our souls from getting destroyed? There are some verses that uh, the Lord is going to share with us right now that is going to show us because if we, if we don't update ourselves, if our salt is not being preserved as well, we are not going to be able to preserve anybody. We are not going to be of help to anybody. In fact, we will be a burden to them. If the salt is served, is spoiled, and then you add it to food, the food will go bad. Not so. The food will turn to poison. The food will turn, will turn to something else. But God has not appointed you and I to turn to something bad. Uh, the Lord will preserve you, preserve me, and will make us to be able to fulfill our calling in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 In the Bible days, there are various ways 
that God appointed salt to function. Various ways, just like we know today, there are various ways that God appointed salt to, to function. But what are some of what are, what are those things that, that the scriptures say about salt? Just give me a minute. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, if you turn your Bible to Ezekiel chapter 43 from verse 24. And thou shalt offer them before the Lord. And the priest shall cast salt upon them. And they shall offer them up for a burnt offering unto the Lord. I have I have I, I have given to you, I have given to you, and your sons and daughters with you as perpetual allotment. It is ever, it's an everlasting covenant of sorts before the Lord to you and to your descendant. Amen? Amen. Luke chapter 14, verse 34 to 35. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be seasoned? Colossians chapter 4, verse 6. Let your, your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt. That ye may know how to how ye ought to do what to answer every man. Now it may look ambiguous that Pastor, I am not a chemical, I am a living human being. How am I going to be salt to people? Now look, look at it. Jesus is saying to you that we should have salt in ourselves. What is the salt spiritual things that we call salt in our life? That is what we are looking at. The salt that Jesus is referring to are Things that the grace of God, the nature of God in your life. Let your life be full with grace. Let the, your life be filled with abundance of grace. So much that if you say a word to people, they say, Ah, I'm so blessed with what he said. But go to somebody whose life is opposite, whose life has no grace at all. Even if he offers to help. The moment they start to speak, they say, Oh no, I don't like to hear this person. I don't even want him to cook. Why? Because that person's life is lacking salt. I pray your life will not lack salt in Jesus' name. Amen. What is the salt that the Bible is referring to here? Is the grace of God. Is the grace of God. How does it come into our life? It comes as salvation. Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2, verse 11. Say, the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared unto all men. Teaching us to deny ungodliness and worthy loss. Look at it. Titus chapter 2. Maybe you want to read it. It's Titus chapter 2 from verse 11. If you have found it, I want, you, I want you to read it. Titus chapter 2 from verse 11. Because you might be wondering, grace, you talk about grace. How does the grace come? Do, do we pluck it from the tree? No. God has sent the grace down. And that grace came through Jesus Christ. Titus chapter 2. We want to read from verse 11. The grace of God that brings salvation and appear unto all men. What does it do to us? It's preserving us. It's helping us. That we remain as salt. It's teaching us some things. It's making us what we're supposed to be. So that our own life is not, is not decayed as well. Look at it. Let me just read it to us. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation had appeared unto all men, teaching us that deny ungodliness and worldly loss, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Now, think about it. Jesus appoints you and I to be salt. And we say that salt is grace. If I don't have the grace, how am I going to help somebody who is going awire? Who, is, who thinks sinning is games? Who thinks Unrighteousness is smartness. Some people think unrighteousness is smartness. Some people think lying is wisdom. Ah, I use wisdom for him. And what the person do? <laughs> he will tell you that he lied. I just said, uh, I just told him something that he wants to hear. What does people want to hear? <laughs> the, the person wants to hear lies. And then I use wisdom. People call lies wisdom. They call unrighteousness smartness. And when they, <laughs> and when they have defrauded you, they say, well. <laughs> <laughs> wisdom past wisdom. <laughs> May God help us. Yes. If we live our life like that, 
We are not going to bring salt into the life of anybody. We are not going to bring grace into the life of anybody. The world is decaying. The world is going bad. Things are going worse day by day. Things are going wrong day by day. Iniquity is multiplying. And Jesus has, has planted you and I to be salt. How are we going to get the salt to salt them? That is it. The grace, the salt come from Jesus Christ. Just like the light we talked about last week come from Jesus Christ himself. The, he said... The, the, the grace of God that brings salvation, that brings sanity, that brings holiness, that brings holiness, that brings righteousness, that brings ability to live right, ability to please God, ability to live a pleasing life, ability to be a blessing to other people, to be a blessing to friends, to be a blessing to colleagues, to be a blessing to family members. The, that, that ability comes from Jesus Christ. And that ability that, that Jesus Christ has appeared. That's why I say the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared unto all men. Teaching us because we have received him. He's teaching us. You, you are not waiting to be taught. Don't steal. You already know stealing is not good. Don't lie. You already know lying is not good. So when because you have already known what is right, what is wrong, when you go out there and you see people who are trying to cheat, who are trying to steal, who are trying to, like my colleague was telling me yesterday at work, he said he saw a very big personality and two young college students. And because of the games that was going on uh, England uh, versus uh, this other uh, uh, country, they, they, they won the play before yesterday. Ye- yesterday was the Ukraine. But the other one, when they beat uh, the, 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 other, the other team, the Germany, that this guy, even though he's well dressed, he just came and did what? He just came and jumped on these two college students. And then he was there. Not because he knew these people too, too uh, 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 as well. He just came, he just got there. He just pulled the man off, and the man could not argue because he looks like he's drunk. He has acted like salt in that way. He didn't say, "I'm not a policeman," but here is a very big, hefty person that is jumping up on slender, short say, college college student, and he knows that he's going to break their bone. He just went there. What did he do? He just plugged the man off. What's going on? What's happening here? Come on, leave them. Come on. And then the man just left and because he was intoxicated. That is what we are saying. We are not saying we should take the work of the police. Don't get me wrong. But there are some situations whereby when you see God has destined you to be there at that moment. God has destined you. This person wants to steal. He said, don't, don't tell anybody. I just want to do it. If you are assault in that place, you will not say, no, no. Well, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not agreeing with you in this one. I'm not, I'm not accepting that you want to steal that and you say I should not take. Well, <laughs> if they ask me, I will tell where it goes. You might not even tell him, you just walk away. Or you warn him. You must do something. You, God is expecting that you, your, your presence preserves sanity. Your presence protects things. Your presence pro- protects righteousness. Your presence stands by the word of God. You are not part of uh, evil. You are not part of de- degradation. You are not part of destruction. You are not part of unrighteousness. You are not part of the evil that is multiplying in this earth. You are not part of the multiplication of sin in this planet. I pray God will give us understanding in Jesus' name. God wants you and I to be salt. But if you don't have salt in us, in yourself, how are you going to do it? The person that did what he did, that I talked about just now, he has some level of training. Apart from being an athlete. Are you with me? He has some level of training. God is bringing us to this knowledge so that we will know some things from him and we'll be able to use for and represent him wherever we go. The world is getting destroyed day by day. And if we are not careful, it's going to come to our door. It's going to come close to our family. It's going to come close to our friendship. It's going to come close to our neighbor. But what is God expecting you and I to do? He wants us to be salt. He wants us to, to be sought. He wants us to have enough grace in our life to be able to stop evil perpetuated, evil spreading, evil overtaking people, evil taking, uh, taking over the, 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 the land. I pray God will help you and I in Jesus' name. God wants us to have more salt. Don't, don't just have a little bit of salt. Now look at it. When in the days of the Old, Old Testament, when Israel was there, God told them that when you even bring sacrifice to me, not because a priest or a prophet will just eat it. God even himself delighted in adding salt. In fact, there is a covenant God told Israel to do that a covenant of salt. What does that mean? A covenant of permanence. We, our life cannot be like the life of the world whereby 
Today, they are, they are living for God. Tomorrow, no. God wants us to be stable. God wants us to enter into a relationship with Him and enter into, palm, into, into, into covenant relationship so that we are, we are stable with Him. We are a child of God today. We are a child of God tomorrow. Until we leave this planet, we are not, we are not trading it up. Christianity is not something you believe because I'm still under my prayer. And then when you leave and then you go to anywhere and then you are not a Christian. Christianity is not something we do when we are in the church and when we go on the, on the shopping complex, we are no longer Christian. No. God wants this thing to be permanent in us and he wants us to come into so much agreement with him that this thing is permanent in either there is pastor there either there is parent there either there is boss there either they are not there we are living for god jesus is the one that is appointing us it's not the pastor it's not the parent it's not the relative it's not the uh, the law are you with me it's not the law jesus wants us to be what to be to be sought wherever we are and he wants us to be the salt of the earth salt of everywhere we go i pray god will qualify you he will help you to be salt in jesus name but the problem now is that the ingredient that made salt they were not salt originally one ingredient is here one ingredient how can i be salt we know of making salt in the laboratory this is not laboratory salt now how can God make you an eye sore? Because if you look at yourself, that, yeah, Pastor, you are giving us too big job. This is a tall order. That I should be salt of the earth. You think I'm, I'm going to see somebody fighting one another in, in town and I'm going to begin to separate them? Pastor, you're getting that wrong. <laughs> Praise God. God knows your strength. God knows my strength. God is not sending you to a job you cannot handle. Amen? Amen. But there are things you can do. When you walk in the street out there, there are sinners sinning. There are people, you are not going to go there and be condemning them and then be punching them in the nose. No, you can speak the word of love to them. You can show the love of Christ. You can show the grace of God. You can show the goodness of God. You can speak a word in season, a word fitly spoken, a word spoken at the right time, a word fitly spoken that will bring somebody who wants to commit suicide back to life, that will bring somebody who wants to steal or somebody who wants to do evil, somebody who wants your hand in the evil you want to participate to stop it. Amen. There are times people commit sins together. They tell their friend, Dude, this is what we are going to do today. Say, because you know you are sorry, say, sorry, that is not going to happen as long as I'm here. You are not doing that. And that's not the, the reason why we have met anyway. And then you put your feet down and say, oh no, uh, this is not happening. And then they say, no, I've forgotten that this guy is here, that we are not doing this. That is it. You are becoming salt in that place. God wants us to represent it. He wants us to, he wants us to have salt in us that we preserve wherever we go. I pray that you will preserve in Jesus' name. But in case you don't have enough salt, how can we form salt? How can we become salt? That's the point. Because what you don't have, you don't give to people. If it is just one ingredient of salt that is standing alone, it does not sweeten. In fact, an ingredient of salt that things that make common salt, when they stand alone, they are dangerous. If I bring chlorine to this place now, everybody will be choking. True of us, those of us who did science. I'm looking at the direction of people I know they did science. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> science people. If I bring chlorine here, won't you, people will choke. Not so. People will choke. And before you know it, chlorine will form acid in this atmosphere and it will be poisonous. If I take sodium, just sodium, I bring it here and I carelessly put it in water, in, 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 you will see some explosion. But when chlorine and, and, and sodium come together properly, either in the laboratory or by God's doing, they are calm, they are neutralized, and they can, they can be useful. Now, if we are outside Christ, we are like chlorine standing alone, we are like sodium standing alone, then how do we become salt? Are you getting the picture I'm painting now? How does this different element become salt? How do we become salt? God wants us to be salt. But I'm not salt. I am honest. If you go to town to go and preach to people, some people will tell you that, look, I'm not going to heaven. I've, in one week, I met two men who told me they are not going to heaven. They said if they get, get to heaven, they are not going to be popular there. That they are going down. That they are two bad boys. That they are, they are very bad. One was like I've known him for some time. He said to me, he, he knows that he's going down. That he's going down. He's not, he's not going up. He, his friends will be down. And so he can go up. <laughs> and he meant it. He meant it. 
this is a person that told me that he had been to prison several times several times that the last time they want to give him a parole not to not not to spend the whole maybe they give him 50 years and he has just spent seven years and they want to send him home he said no i'm not going home every time you send me home i always come back every time you send me home, i always come i'm not going home he said he's going to spend the whole prison time and he spent it there he told me by himself what am i trying to say if you meet such a person what is, what, what are we to do when he says that he's going down and that he, he cannot go anywhere, God expects us to do what? To turn that person to salt. Amen? Amen? If I don't have enough salt, I won't be able to affect him. Are we getting it? In, uh, in our country, there is a kind of meat that they, they preserve with salt. This meat can stay months, months. They will load it with a lot of salt, a lot of salt, a lot, a lot of salt. They will not cook it. They will not do anything. They will just load salt into this. And it will stay there because of the salt. Now, how do I, how do I become something that preserves like that? There are some ingredients that need to come together. Jesus is our biggest salt. Amen? Amen. Jesus is the salt of our saltiness. Are you with me? Jesus is the source of, in the Bible language, Jesus is the source of our grace. And Jesus has appeared unto all men. The, the, have you tasted that Jesus? Because it is from Jesus you can have the salt. He has appeared unto all men. He has been teaching us to deny ungodliness. But if you have not come in, close, in contact with Jesus Christ, I may be playing religion. I may be coming to church, but that thing they are preaching, I may not understand. My, the grammar of the pastor might look too high. The pastor might be speaking the religious language. I may not understand what the pastor is saying, but what is, it, what is the essence of Jesus telling me I'm a, I'm a light of the world? If I walk out of this place, I am, not, I am not a light of the world. If I walk out of this place, I am not a soul. I even go back worse than I came in. Of what use is our sitting down here? So the question is still there. How do I become salt? It's not difficult. Jesus will make you a salt in Jesus' name. Amen. How do I become salt? It's very simple. We need to invite the chief salt into our life. We need to invite Jesus Christ. Jesus has, 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 has been manifested. He has, he has been manifested. It does not matter how worse, how bad you have been, what you have done. There are some things that we do and nobody knows about. It's only you who knows it. When we are still sinners, it's only you. Father does not know. Mother does not know. The friend does not know. Siblings does not know. You are the only one that knows. Uh, boss does not know, uh, subordinate does not know, you are the only one that knows. But then, when you come into Christ, what do you do? You submit all those things to Christ. You confess them to Christ. You expose yourself to God. And God does what? He washes it away. When God comes into your life, He takes away all the filthiness. When He takes away all the filthiness, you are preserved. You, are, you, you, you have preserved. You, all the guilt of the sin, the secret sin, they are gone. And then you hear the voice of God telling you, you are a child of God. You are now a child of God. At that point, when the Spirit of God bear witness, we are that a child. You are a salt. Amen. You have become a salt. And God does not just want you to be like that and then go and degrade. No. He wants you to continue to preserve, to continue to work, to continue to make other people to be salt. But then, Pastor, your language is not clear to us. <laughs> I know. Some, some of us are still thinking like that. God is telling you in simple language that he wants you to, your life to be transformed because if you if you don't get transformed you can't transform other people if you don't get sweetened you can't switch other other people if you don't have that preservative power you can't preserve other people's life if you don't if you don't if you don't have that protective power, you can't protect anybody you can't stop decadence you can't stop delinquency you can't stop degradation you can't stop decomposition if you don't have it in your life jesus is that one that you need in your life jesus is what you need to swallow jesus is what you need to call into your heart Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. Look at that. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and he will sup with me and he with me. You can, I will stop with him and he with me. This is how to become salt. If Jesus did not come to your life, you are not going to be salt. If chlorine does not come to <laughs> sodium, they are not salt is not going to be formed. 
Yes, there are some salt that are sulfate salt. The sulfate does not come to, 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 to chlorine, I mean to, to sodium. To, the, 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 the sulfate does not come to the metal. The salt is not going to be formed. So you have got to come and mingle with Christ. You have got to invite Jesus Christ. And Jesus is not far away. Don't think that he's in the third heaven. He's far away. In fact, there is no rocket to go to Mass here. I mean, there is no, nobody could go to Mass. How, how will Jesus contact me? No, Jesus is here. He's sitting beside you. He's standing beside you. He said, and lo, I am beside you. I am at the door. I am knocking the door of your heart. I want to turn you into salt. And what turns a human being, normal human being, who was born in sin, who was bred in sin, who knows how to sin without schooling? You know, how many people go to a school they call the College of Sin? <laughs> is there anybody that went to College of Sin here? A child that is three months, the mother puts him down to go and do something in the kitchen. And then he wakes up, he can't find the mom, mom, and then he starts to cry, and he cries and cry and cry. And by the time the mommy carries the baby and, and gives the, 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 the child is so angry that he's not even taking the, 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 the milk, and he's, he's so angry. Haven't we seen such situation before? Who taught that child to be so angry? <laughs> Which school did the child go and learn hunger? Are you with me? And uh, some of the children that has uh, started growing it. And they are still sucking uh, milk as well. On one occasion, they just decided to. <laughs> Have you heard that before? Some, 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 some infant, they bite the mom. <laughs> and then they say, Ah, who did you do? Why did you do that? Who taught that, that child to do that? It looks like game. But he does it once. You didn't, because it's a child, you don't beat the, the child. <laughs> you can't beat the child, you know? That will be abuse. And then the child does it again. The first day he does it, he looks at your face. You saw you are not happy. But why did he do it again? Who taught that little baby to bite without offense? Even if he felt offended, who taught that baby to bite person? Think, think about it. When he turns to become a toddler, he started speaking. And then he learned abuses so fast. Where did this person learn these abuses? Who taught him? Well, it might be by listening to the other people. But who taught him that you two can do it? That is it. Nobody brought anybody to school of sin. Yet, children, and that's, that agrees with what David said. In, in sin did my mother conceive me. In sin was I brought up. Are you with me? No, no special college for sin. But people just grow up with Adamic nature. Grow up with Adamic nature. In fact, people grow up with so much Adamic nature that it becomes a bondage. It becomes a bondage. And those who are honest with themselves, they are crying. Who is going to deliver me? Who is going to help me? Look at Romans chapter 7. I'm going to read something to you there. Romans chapter 7. There are people who have been in this condition who wanted to be saw. God destined them to be saw. But they have problem of sin. They have problem of pollution. They, 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 cannot, they cannot handle the problem going on in their life. And yet God has a plan for their life. And yet they are struggling. They are suffering. They are religious. It's not because they are not religious. They are religious. But yet they, they just find out that their, their, their life has been trapped. Romans chapter 7. Let's look at it from verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. This is the nature of somebody who eventually became an apostle. This is a person who is a Pharisee. This is a person that is a doctor of law. This is a person that is very, very well versed in the word of God. But this person has not become salt. At this time, he was a fanatic. At this time, he was killing Christians. At this time, he was persecuting Christians. At this time, he was hating Jesus Christ. At this time, he was kicking against the prick. But this person needs to become an apostle. He needs to be a person that we are going to read after, after 2,000 years. And we are reading about him today. But this person didn't start to become salt. So don't condemn yourself that, Pastor, when am I going to become salt? I'm not salt. I've been going to church for a long time. It's only me that know that I'm a sinner. It's only me that know. Don't worry. You, are not, you have not come here for condemnation. I have not been sent to condemn you as well. Are you with me? It does not matter whatever you are, whatever you have done, or whatever is going on. You are, you are not here in the court. You are not here to be judged. You are not here to be sentenced. You are not here to be condemned. You are not going to walk out here with condemnation. Are you with me? You have come to the presence of the Almighty. Not to the presence of pastor, but you have come to the presence, to the, to the, to the place of grace. Grace. Jesus has brought that grace, and you are not going to live without that grace in Jesus' name. Amen. This person, his name is Apostle Paul. He, he, he was lamenting about his situation. Even though he was religious, people thought that he is okay. 
religiously he's sound, he's good, he's a good person. He's morally sound. You will not see this person smoking. You will not see this person doing disco. You will not see this person having boyfriend, girlfriend. You will not see this person uh, having a concubine. No, it's not like that, but he is still a sin. He's not yet salt. He's religious. He's very, very religious, but he's, he, has not, he's, he has not gotten there. Look, look at his lamentation from verse 15. For that which I do, I allow not. What does that mean? What I do in my, in my life, I don't even think about lying, I just lie. I don't even premeditate it, it just flow. <laughs> I don't plan it, I just do it. <laughs> he's acting like insect, with instinct. And he will plan to do something good, but he's not capable. Why? Because he's not yet salt. He has not become salt. He is still, pollu- he's still a polluted being, polluted human being. Look at it. For that which I, I do, I allow no. I don't wish what I am doing. I, what I plan, I don't do. For what I would, that is what I desire, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. And he's a religious leader. He's a religious leader. He's a leader in, the, in, in, in Judaism. He's a whatever, he's a worker. He's a respected member of the, of, of the synagogue. Well, what he hates, that's what he does. All, can you imagine? And people don't know. They thought he's upright, he's, he's, he's good. They don't know that he is, he is, he is part of the degradation of the, of the art. Now, if I then, if, if then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. The law that is judging me, condemning me that I am bad, that law is okay. I have no fault with the law. It's just that I am not measuring up. Even though we try to keep the law of Moses, law is good. At least law is telling me that I have not measured up. I have not pa- I'm not perfected. But this man did not die like that. Whatever is the problem in your life, you are not going to die with them. Amen. Whatever is the problem in your life, you are not going to go out with them. Amen. God is going to reach to you with his grace. And the salt of Christ will come abundantly unto you. That you, you not only have salt in you, you will be distributor. Amen. Amen. You will be sharing salt. You will be sharing grace to other people in Jesus' name. Amen. That it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. This person, all he had in him was just glory. All he had in him may just be sodium. He is not having salt in himself. This is a dangerous man. Just like glory is dangerous. Sodium is dangerous. If you take them alone. He, the, the salt is not formed in him yet. He doesn't have the life of Christ. He cannot be of help to the generation after him. He is a injurious person. He is a dangerous man. And some of us may not see ourselves like that just because we are religious, just because we are participating in, church, in the church. But sin will undo us. Sin will destroy us. Sin will take us to a place we don't want to go. Sin will make us, because the sin is seated in our personality, it will make us to do things that we know God doesn't want us to do. Not just because the pastor is telling us. We, all, we also know that this thing is wrong, but you still do it. But why are you doing it? Because sin has captivated you. Sin has hijacked us. Sin has, uh, has, has trapped us. Sin has kidnapped many people. And you don't know how it came there. It doesn't matter how it came. We are all born in sin. The Bible says all have sinned. And we have come short of the glory of God. That's why you have not come for condemnation. Nobody has reported you to the pastor. Are you with me? No, I don't know the secret of anybody here. Are you with me? I, I, I believe you trust me. Amen. So now, but what we have come for is for us to get the grace of God. You say, I'm a believer. Do you have enough salt? Some of us, we say we are a believer, but we are in a dormant situation. When salt stays on the shelf for too long, that's when the salt gets spoiled. Salt does not get spoiled when you are using it. When salt is not used for a long time, it will attract water. It will be melting. And then bacteria will not be able to come in, and then it will break down. That's how salt gets, gets spoiled. But when salt is in, in, a, in a thing that it is preserving, he doesn't allow bacteria to come in. Can you see the difference? Some of us, we are all-time believers, and yet the, our salt is getting neutralized gradually. We are getting dormant. We are getting dormant. We are getting idle. And we are not, we are, we are, we are not functional anymore. God said, God wants you to have salt in yourself. God wants to, to renew our salt. God wants us to invite Jesus into our, to rededicate our life to him again. God wants us to, 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 to apply for more grace. What helped this guy, this man that we are reading about, is Jesus Christ. He, he didn't struggle on his own. He didn't continue in, in his failure. But look at it. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. Can you see? Some people will say I am a good man. But this religious man says, in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For it is 
For, for, to, for to will, that is to desire, is present with me. It is normal for me. I will make a resolution in, in, in January, in December 31st, but I don't do it. I always break my resolution before the end of 1st of January. Look at it. He said, to will is present with me, but to do, I don't have power to do. I don't have ability to do. I'm always breaking my rules. I make the law, I break it. I make the rule, I break it. I can't, I can't, even, I can't even obey what, what, what rules I set down. Look at it. If then I do that which I would not, I consent that the law is good. Now, then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that, that which is good, how to perform, that's what he doesn't know. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. He does not know how to. All the laws he has in his head cannot help him. The Ten Commandments he thinks he's keeping cannot help him. For the good that I would do, I do not. I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I don't desire, that's what I do. Now, if I do that I would not, it is no longer, it is no, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. But you do know if he dies in that, in those things that he was doing, where will he go? Hell. Will God say, it is not you that is doing it, it is the sin that is in your heart. <laughs> do you understand? So, it's, he, he, he still has to bear responsibility for what he does in his body. But he's trying to explain what is going on in his life. He, there is a division. There is a civil war going on in his heart. He does not know how to do what is right. Then, he, he's now saying that what the problem I have is that I find a law that when I will plan to do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God. That's why he knows the law in his head. There are some things we know in our head, but they are not in our hearts. Apostle Paul knew all the laws. He knows, he knows Psalm 119 of it. He knows all the five books of Moses of health hand. Before, you, if you don't know them, you don't become a Pharisee. He knows all those letters, but the letters were killing him. And he also was killing people. But thank God that he, he didn't die in that situation. He said, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warning, warring against the law of my mind, bringing me into captivity, into bondage, to the law of sin which is in my members. O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this, of this death? Who could deliver him? The law of Moses could not deliver him. And he cannot tell his boss, his master, his professors, that I keep the law to your standard, but I am not satisfied in my conscience. My conscience is condemning me. I do evil secretly. The one you cannot see. It's true you might not see me having a, a, a man friend, girlfriend, uh, whatever, but I lost in my heart. That's going on in his heart. It's, you might not see me still, but I covet that, oh, who did this flower become mine? Who, who did my pocket will be big enough? I just pick this flower and put it there and go away with it. Those things are going on in his heart. Are you with me? And this man knew, but he didn't keep quiet. Don't keep quiet. God expects you to cry unto him. This man was crying in his heart. Who will deliver me? I'm a religious person, but I don't, I'm not having righteousness. I don't have salt. How am I going to be a blessing to people of my generation? But God answered his prayer. God will answer your prayer today. Amen. Then he said, because he prayed, and God has heard him, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Will you thank God today? Will you thank God today? This man thank God. Look at how poor, look at how bad, look at how terrible. He was even killing people. You, I don't see anybody who has killed people here. No, you have not even measured up to him. He was killing people, but God helped him. God will help you. Amen. If God can help Apostle Paul, God can help everybody here. Amen. The grace is still abounding. You are not here to come and be condemned by one self-righteous pastor. No, nobody is self-righteous here. Are you with me? We were all born in sin. We are all groomed in sin. But at one time, different times of our life, we met Christ. Today might be your own day. Are you with me? Don't cover yourself with religion. Ah, when we have some people to testify, they say, tell us today you are born again. Say, I, I've been born into the church. Mm -hmm. Are you born on the pulpit or you are born in the choir session? <laughs> That's what people say. I have been born into the church. They are telling us that my parents are believers. 
the faith of parents doesn't carry you to heaven. The, the faith of, of, of the father, if you don't take your own, I mean, subscribe, repent, confess, you are not there yet. The father, you are born in the vicarage, you are born in the mission house, that doesn't take anybody to heaven. Do we understand? This is what we are saying. Everybody has to sign contract with Christ. You have to come into covenant with Jesus Christ. You have to repent of your personal sin. You have to tell God. Don't say you are born holy. There is nobody that is born holy. No, not one. Except Jesus Christ. Or maybe John the Baptist. Are you with me? There is nobody that is born with holiness from you. We are all born in sin. But at some point, you have got to repent. You have got to confess your sin. You have got to tell God, own up to your... Don't, don't, don't excuse your sin. That it's not my fault. It's because of my, my parents. I, I don't want to be like this. I didn't, I didn't give back to myself. Some people will say. I didn't, I didn't cause myself to be like this. It, it's because of my condition. I make me to be sinning. I make me to be lying. It's because they, they will have money they will not give you. That's why I'm silly. They will, they will have money to buy good things. They, that's why I'm doing it for myself. Mm-mm. Don't put responsibility that you're supposed to bear on other people. Take your responsibility. Understand that parents cannot help you. Pastor cannot help his son. Cannot help his, 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 his wife. You have to take on God by yourself. Repent today. Re- re- receive him. He said he's knocking at the door of your heart. He's trying to make it simple so that you can understand. He wants you, he wants you to bring in him until it comes in, until sodium comes into, the, into, into chloride. Salt will not be formed. You can't be the salt of the world if you don't have, uh, invite Jesus into your soul. Take him in. Let him come in. Without Jesus, you can't be any, you can't, you can't, you, your life cannot sweet, be sweet. And you can do nothing as well. And you can't help other people. In fact, you will be a nuisance to other people. They say, every time he comes here, bad thing happen. I pray you will not be a bad leg. But when you have salt, every time it comes here, good things happen. I have colleagues at work. Anytime they, 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 this guy met, met me, he will always tell me this, this and that, and I will always cancel. One day, after a long time that we have met, he said, every time I met you and I talk to you, I'm always feeling lifted. I didn't even know what I was doing to him. Only that when he asked me a question, I give him answer. But I didn't know what joy I brought to his heart. I don't know how, what, how much deliverance I was bringing. If I don't have it in me, I can't give it to him. What you don't have, you don't give to others. Jesus wants you to become salt today, and you can have that salt. There is abundance of salt here. We, we're going to rise up to pray right now. We're going to tell God, Lord, I want to be salt of the earth. I don't want to be, I don't want to be part of the destruction, degradation. I don't want to be part of the worldliness. I don't want to be part of, part of, part of the nuisance, the trouble of the world. I don't want to be re- religious without righteousness. I want to have salt in me. I want to be salt. I don't want to be hypocritical about it that nobody knows what I'm doing. Because nobody knows what I'm doing, then I am all right. No. The fact that people don't know what you are doing doesn't make you to be all right. Tell God, Lord, I want, to, I want to know God personally. Not because I follow my mother, my father, my parents to, to, to church. Oh, I, my father is, uh, I am born in Vicary, I am born in Mission. No, I want to know God personally. I want to know God by myself. Tell God, Lord, I want to know God by myself. I want to know God by myself. I want to know God. I want to know you. I want to know, I want to know your love. I want to know your deliver. I want you to deliver me. I want you to come into my heart. I want you to come. I want to be salt. I want to be a part of people that preserve. I want to bring sanity to the world. I want to bring righteousness to the world. I want to extend your grace to people. I don't want to be part of the problem of the world. I, I don't want to be part of the worldliness of the world. I don't want to be part of degradation that they don't even know who, who, who is who. If, the, if, 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 if they catch some people in the in town center and they say, all of you, you are, you are, you are this, you are, they, they must be able to single you out that, no, this one is a Christian, this one is a Christian, but if you want to mix up with people of the world so much that they can't even identify you, ah, that is not good, that is dangerous, that is not your calling, that is not my calling, pray unto God that Lord, the sort that will make me to be distinguished, that will make me to be different, that will make me to preserve, that will make me to make people to be preserved, Lord, put that sort in me, Lord, Jesus Christ, I know you are the only one who help Apostle Paul, come and help me, you have helped my parents, you have helped my friend, you have helped my dad, you have helped my mom. Lord, help me as well. It is, it is me that need help now. It is me that need help. Help me. I, I don't want to walk out of this place without your grace. I need your help now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I've told you, Jesus has brought blessing. He didn't bring condemnation. No. You have not offended anybody. And you are, nobody has reported you to anybody. But God is building is constructing foundation for this church and the foundation 
has to be what it is, what Christ wants it to be. God made light and he made firmament. We are, we, he has told us that we are light and he's now telling us that you, you want you to be salt. That wherever you are, you must be preserving. Wherever you are, you must be lightening your corner. You must be representing him. You, you, and, you, and you want that to happen. If you have prayed that honestly right now, your life will never remain the same in Jesus' name. Amen. Your life will be turned around. Amen. Look, you are going to become poles and pillar in this house. You are not only going to be foundation members in this place. You are going to be poles and pillar. You are going to be dependable. God is going to be trusting on you and going to be relying on you. God is going to be depending on you. God is going to say, I have my daughter there. I have my son there. I have my daughter there. I have that person there. As long as those people are there, that's, that's enough. That's okay. That's what Abraham told, 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 told that the rich man. He said, Abraham, send Lazarus to the wall so that he can go and preach to my people in my, family, in my father's house. Abraham told him, that, look, they have Moses. They have all, all other prophets. If they don't listen to those prophets that are on earth, even if somebody comes from the grave, they won't listen. So God, has, God wants to, 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 be, to be here. God wants to be, to be representing him. So that when anybody is crying in hell, send somebody to the earth. Send somebody back to the earth to, to, to go and preach with my, with my marriage. God will, Abraham will be telling them, they have Pastor Abraham. They have uh, Brother Samuel there. They have uh, <laughs> Sister, Aba, Sister Abigail there. They have uh, Sister Dockers there. They have Mary there. Yes, they, they have uh, goodness there. They have uh, uh, sis, uh, Mommy Esther there. They have uh, Timothy there. They have uh, Sister Paulina there. That is what the, uh, Abraham will be telling them. They have people who are representing God in the planet. And you don't have any problem. God wants you to represent him here. Because people are crying. As I'm speaking, they are crying in hell. They are asking people to send. They are asking people in heaven to send people to, 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 to this planet. But you are here. God wants to depend on you. Will you be dependable? Accept Jesus. And Jesus will be living your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you very much for the word you have sent to us. Lord, you want us to be salt. But how can we break this down? Lord, how can people be salt? When we don't even understand what it is to be salt, are we going to be cooking salt? Not cooking salt. Lord, it's just a metaphor. You want us to represent you. You want us to have the, the life of Christ, the righteousness of Christ, the grace of Christ, the mercy of Christ, to show mercy unto other people, to show them the pathway. Lord, if we don't know the pathway, how we are going to lead people astray. And today you have shown us how to, how, how, how to have that salt in us. That, that's the source of the salt is to have Jesus in us. Is to invite Jesus into our soul. Is to have Jesus and to hate unrighteousness. And to repent of all our secrecy. And to confess them unto you. Lord, today as many that are doing this. They are subscribing to you. They are repenting of their ways. Repenting of their sin. And they are forsaking them. And they want to know Jesus personally. They want to know your love. They want to know your power. They want to know your grace personally. Lord, not because parent is forcing, down, forcing it down their throat. They want to know you personally today. Lord, I pray that you open your heaven. Open your resources. Open your treasure. And bless their soul. Bless their life. Oh Lord, deliver them from power of the flesh. Deliver them from power of secrecy. And liberate them today. Jesus, come into their heart. Come into their soul. And dwell with them from today in Jesus' name. Amen. Whatever is the bondage of habit, bondage of sin, secret sin that nobody knows about, Lord, deliver them and heal them today in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, wash away whatever blemish by which they have been condemning themselves. Lord, whatever is the sin that by which they say, I'm not worthy. Lord, whatever makes them unworthy. Lord, today by your blood, wash them and clean them and make them your own today in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus can come anytime. Lord, whenever you will appear, count us worthy to go with you. Amen. And if you have not come, wherever we stand, help us. That will not be part of the degradation of the earth. Will not be part of the decomposing earth. Will not be part of the ju ju juvenile delinquency of the earth. But oh Lord, we will be agent of preservation, agent of, uh, of permanence in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father, for doing it. Thank you, Lord. From today, make us all sort of the earth. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank God for the service today. This is True Gospel Bible Church, and we believe that the Lord who has brought you and blessed you today will keep you in the faith in Jesus' name. Amen. We do have Bible study on Wednesday, as we have been announced, 10 o'clock. Please make sure you join us. God bless you as you do in Jesus. Amen. When you come next week, bring your friends. Show that you have become light. Show that you have become salt. 
preserve other people and bring them here. We want youth and we want to appoint a youth leader. Are you with me? We want action from the youth. If the church is going to be vibrant and progress, youth must be active, not dormant youth. I pray that the Lord will make us active youth for Christ in Jesus' name. Amen. So please bring more youth. We want more youth yes. in this place. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Goodbye.